Joseph. All right. Yeah. Joseph in the building. My guy, what's good with you, man? Oh, I'm not budget, John. This beautiful uh, Wednesday, Wednesday evening on a nice Sunday day. All right, that's what's up, man. Yeah, we coming out of the, you know, coming out of the, coming out of the woods. You know, winter time is pretty much over with. We about to hit the first official summer vacation. Uh, Memorial hey, Day. Man. You know how they say. You know how they say Memorial Day starts the summer and. Labor Day ends the summer. You know what I'm saying? So, right, right. So we got a couple of months to uh to enjoy some uh good weather, man. You out of you from Georgia, right? Yeah, yeah. Born and raised. Uh, I'm uh yes, I'm born and raised. I'm um I'm I live in uh Millersville, Georgia. But I was um I was basically pretty much back and forth from Atlanta. To uh, Millersville, you know, my girlfriend staying in, in Millersville, so I, I basically be going back and forth, and uh, well, let, yeah. Let, so uh, I want to. I'm a ask, Georgia boy. I want to. I want to. Yeah. I want to ask, man. I, I want to ask, and you know, don't and don't take this the wrong way, my G. Don't 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 take this the wrong okay. way or nothing like that. But you know, I, I heard many, 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 many stories about Georgia, man. For for the guys that's that's down there, from what I from what I hear, I, I'd want to see if the conception is reality from a person that was born and raised and 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 grew up in Georgia. Is it is what they say it is down there, man? Like, you know, it's 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 hard to tell ladies from ladies and and getting <laughs> and, and getting hemmed up from you know from from players, pimps, and everything else that's down there, bro. Well, you know, you got your good and your bad and everywhere. And, uh, you know, uh, I was fortunate enough to be in a back, uh, area that I, I don't have no problem. So I'm pretty much like in a laid back area. Everybody know, everybody know everybody. And, um, and, um, you know, opportunity that comes here, you know, here, you know, like in the city, in the city as far as it, like Atlanta wise. There's opportunities everywhere as far as schooling and jobs and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, and, you know, here at Middlesbrough, it's just a little small town. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, it could be good and it depends on the atmosphere. And uh, for the most part, you know, I, I'm pretty much was blessed to be in a laid back area. Okay. Okay. All right. So tell me, man, how you got your start in trucking? I went to, uh, okay, I had lost my license. My license been suspended from 2006 to 2017. So, and I was like, um, now I'm tired of riding around dirty. I'm driving my car, riding dirty, looking behind, looking in the river mirror. So, um, um, I knew I needed to make some changes. I need to get my license back. But uh, I don't got my fines up so high to where I couldn't even afford it. So, um, you know, and I found out the, the cab, the was in the town called the Cal County, so they started splitting everybody fines in half. So I went from $2,000 to pay a fine to $1,000. So when they split it in half, it went down to $2,000, I mean, to $1,000. So I said, okay, I went ahead and paid that $1,000. So now when I got my license in my hand, so I looked at my license, I said, look at him. You better make my money back. <laughs> so, and the first thing I got in my mind is I said, I'm going to start going to, uh, looking in to get my CDLs and start driving trucks. And um, so, um, because prior to that, I, knew, I really didn't even have no desire to drive a truck because I was always hearing bad things about trucking and truck drivers and people truck, trucking and turning over and stuff like that. But once I got involved in it, it I said, hey, this is not a bad thing at all. So I started pursuing. So I got my license. I went to the school called CR England Trucker School. And was, was, and boy, I your, say what, that's a very what, good. How long? How long ago was that? And what was your experience with it? That was. Uh, I got my uh, license in 2019. So, but basically, I've been driving like two, uh, three years. Uh, 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 off and on, going from uh, one company went to another company, and then. And then they go on, went to a couple of companies to find the right one. 
What, Man, no. what was your what was your whole experience with uh with training and 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 going through the CR England uh school for your license? Okay, and like I said, they were very good. They were very good. as far as training students, training and getting get me going. I give uh, CR England the props. They did uh, a lot of people have bad things to say about them as far as pay wise, but for schooling wise. They very good. They trained me very well. They taught me everything. I went, uh, got my CDLs, and I went over the road for like 150 hours to go out with a trainer. So, which was roughly like a month or so. So I went out with a trainer and everything, and then came back to the uh, the terminal and did my little thing called upgrade, uh, which basically they just checked some tests you to see if you, everything that you learned, that you took in to everything you learned. So that's what they call upgrade. So as I um, upgraded and uh, forced past my upgrade, and uh, so I got a, little, I got a certificate uh, from the truck, uh, CR in the trucking school. And, uh, you know, saying that I completed the course of CR England trucking school and stuff. So, was, yeah, I just went and was, was CR England, uh, was CR England was your first choice? Like, I mean, what what was the reason why you chose CR England over the, over over going to a regular trucking school? Okay, uh, that was my first choice. Uh, I went to a uh, USA. No, 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 I'm sorry. U.S. Express. I went to there to get, uh, go to trucking school. So they got, they sent me, they basically, uh, sent me on the Greyhound. They sent me to, uh, Kentucky. And I didn't have wait, my, wait, um, wait, 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 U.S., wait, U.S. Express and they sent you to Kentucky? Ain't there's a, ain't, yes, they, ain't, ain't there's a school, ain't there's a terminal down in Tunnel Hill? I didn't, at that time, I didn't even know. Um, I was basically searching for a school, so they came, uh, I was searching for a school, and then, and then I believe they called me one day, uh, often they uh, school and everything, so I agreed with it to all these things, and then went to, I went to their school, which they took me, sent me on the Greyhound, uh, but, at, uh, but I'm sure there's plenty over here in Atlanta, uh, in Atlanta. But I didn't at that time. I didn't know whether I was just basically on still searching, and so I went there, and they disqualified me. <laughs> they disqualified me because one time I didn't have my birth certificate. I uh, had my birth certificate, so I had my nephew to put it in the mail and send it to me, which uh, and I informed them that it would be in a couple. It would be on a Thursday, which I, that was a Tuesday then. And so they, for some reason, didn't have the patience to wait that long. So they sent me home. And so my birth certificate came after I came, I went home. So they you know, had to send my birth certificate back, back, back to my house. And so, uh, well, before I left for U.S. Express, I had not gotten in touch with C.R. England. And uh, I even called, but prior to that, I called Roadmaster and everything, and they disqualified me. I don't know why, but they said that I, they disqualified me. So I, I was, of course, so CR England was the one that I, uh, that took me in with open arms. You had to go to the one that, uh, that give it to you. Like, like I said, some of these, <laughs> some of these trucking schools, man, when you, when you, you know, look for, uh, opportunities out here. You you pretty much just got to go with, with the one that's going to give you your license. Pretty much. All right, my bad, man. Sorry about that. I'm going down these mountains. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. Man. I know mountains. Yeah, them yeah. them Tennessees and them uh, Pennsylvanians and stuff. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> but, uh, where, that's exactly where I'm at. Um. Yeah. <laughs> so you well, like, that, like, like I said, you had to you had to do what you had to do to. Uh, Go mm -hmm. with the company that was going to give you your license, and CR yes. England was it. So how long? How long you was with CR England before you actually decided to say, "Hey, you know the money wasn't right, the pay ain't good, they're not treating me right. It's time to go." And you know what? And when I got out of school, I was so anxious, I was so ready to get in the seat. So what they what they tell you they do once you get uh. Come back from the upgrade. They had you in the hotel, so you got to wait for 
um, yo, uh, GM, uh, general manager, or dispatcher, some whoever gonna be sitting you. So you, I was supposed to team with whoever they choose to team with me for about th- uh, three months. What happened? I had me sitting in the, in the hotel for a month, almost like two months, sitting waiting on the uh, to get out on the truck. So they never did it. So but I know bills started piling up. So I said I ain't got no time to waste. So um, the, when it got to the last two months, I sat in the hotel I like a month and a half, and still waiting on to get in the truck. So I went ahead and called Trans Am Trucking, and uh, they welcomed me with open arms. They flew me to uh, Dallas, Texas, went to orientation, and once I got in the orientation and in the orientation room, head coach here on English calling me trying to seat me in the truck, which I told them it's too late now because I'm already with somebody now. So, so they I was, went on with so it. you you didn't even see you you didn't even you didn't even see the hint of a truck over at CR England because because no. of how long they was they was uh what 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 they was doing waiting for a trainer or what? No, I came back from the trainer. So my next thing was to go to, to, to get with uh, uh whoever um uh, I'm assigned to uh dispatch wise. And I was supposed to team with somebody, so I kept reaching out to the people, but all I was getting voicemail, 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 voicemail. And I'm sitting in the hotel, still sitting in the hotel. Then it stopped, they, they probably pay you for being in the hotel. Then one day they just stopped, the, the mother just stopped coming on the court before me being in there. So, so here I am. I ain't got no, uh, I still ain't got in the truck. And the money don't stop. They don't stop p- putting the money on the car for me being in the hotel. So I went ahead and the car, and my nephew, which is, he's a truck driver as well. he been, he got like six years on his belt. So he suggested me to go, uh, call Trans Am, get the Trans Am the car. So I called Trans Am, and they, without no doubt, they bought the album, and I was in a, um, uh, uh I actually was with them. Uh, I was I, I was solo, but I worked about uh, I went out with a trainer for like uh, two weeks, and after two weeks, when I worked with a trainer, I had my own truck, and then so from there, that's how I bust, that's how I got my experience from Trans Am. All right, all and, right. So let's uh, let's fast forward to uh, to what happened to you over at uh, over at USA Truck, man. You. Uh, you 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 got with USA Trucking. You, you thought it was you you, you thought it was going to be a good a good fit for you, but they of course yeah. they started they started messing with your money. What happened over mm-hmm. here? Okay, they were, when I first got hired on them, I was very impressed. They started they would give me long miles, the miles that I I would, I would like to have, Texas, Georgia, you know, the long miles and stuff. And, um, you know, because that's a truck driver, we get paid by the mouse. We don't get paid by being in the truck. <laughs> so, so I got, I was getting long miles and everything, and that went on. And then, uh, and I noticed about, uh, I was with them basically like two months, uh, growing up two months. And then I noticed the miles stopped, started slacking up. Uh, and then, uh, so when I went on my home time, uh, which was about two weeks ago, I went on my home time. And uh, one of the jobs that I came, uh, they offered me more money uh, weekly on a flat rate and being home every day. They had uh, scheduled me to do a little orientation in there one day I was on home time. So I went down and then they, they actually hired me right on the spot. They got my badge and everything. So they caught, uh, so when I got went back out, I, um, when I went back out, I put in my two weeks notice. And I noticed once I put in my two weeks notice, when they find out I was leaving, they started giving me short runs, short runs. My mouth, so my money wasn't even right. So my last one, my last one, my last check was like three hundred some dollars, which I hadn't even made. Yeah. I didn't do but two runs of that whole week because basically they just had me sitting. Wow. So I. My two weeks notice was supposed to end this Friday. 
But I uh, in last Friday. See, this is crazy, and that's why you know a lot of people be asking me for advice, and they come and ask me. They be like, "Yo, lockout? Should I? Should I let the company know that I'm about to leave?" Look, this is my thing. Don't let don't don't let your left hand knows what your right hand is doing. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Because see, if you if you go back and tell the company and say, hey, you know, I want to put in my two weeks notice, then right then and there, they know automatically, they know that you're you 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 you're either not happy and you're planning on leaving. So what their yeah. thing what their thing is, uh what their thing is is trying to mess with you as much as possible. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, mm -hmm. so now some companies on the flip side of that, they'll try to come back at you and try to, you know, try to entice you to stay by increasing the miles, increasing the relationship between you and the uh the exactly. but, in, yeah. but in cases like in cases like, you know, CR England, uh USA Truck. And all like that. When you let them know that you, you know, you have intentions on leaving, then yeah, they, 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 they really don't, they really don't care about you no more. They, they can sit yeah, you. For, they, don't. they can sit you for the two weeks. So as I always say, here's my advice. Look, you know, just if if you if if you got a couple of days off, have them to route you to the house. Again, don't let them. Don't 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 let the, the, the right hand knows what you're doing. Just, you know, exactly. go down to the house, take care of what you need to take care of. When you come back on, just let them know and just be like, hey, um, where do you want me to drop this truck off at? That's it. That's what I, I that's what a lot of people say. I'm me being trying to be honest and try to be a have a good record and try to, you know, be to do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like you said. Being lawyer to trucking, that there's no, no lawyer to no, no, in trucking. No, 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 my guy. No, there's yeah. no, there's there's no loyalty in trucking, man. Because there's no loyalty to you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. There's, there's all no that loyalty they to you. So that why, should you why, why should you? And see, and that's what a lot of these new jacks, you know, get that misconception from. You know, they get into a company and they think that the company is doing this, that, and the third for them, but they really ain't, you know, because when it, when you turn around and tell the company like, hey, you know, I don't want to do this and I don't want to do that. And, and, and they'll look at you like, oh, well, you, you, you don't have no say so, you know, you either run yeah. it, you either run it or you either run it or you leave. We'll get yeah. somebody. We'll get somebody else to fill that seat to run it for us. Right, and so, then you know what I'm saying they got, and it's there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff that, and you know what I'm saying. Don't the, the, I know the chips was getting smaller and smaller. Wait a minute, now, now this, is, this is not story like that. This is not what the recruiter told me when I first got signed on with him. <laughs> well, the recruiter was telling me everything that I wanted to hear. Exactly. That's that's the re, that's the recruiter's job, bro. The recruiter's job yeah. is to is is to entice you to get in that seat, and then when you get in that seat, you'll learn. You know, you'll learn about the ways of the company. That's what I always tell yeah. people. Like, you know, you know, give give the company, you know, thirty days, sixty days to see if it's right for you because you right. definitely, you know mm -hmm. everything that the recruiter tells you. You definitely gonna find out more so when you actually drive for that company, man. Well, hey, man, that bro, is so true. bro, thank you for coming on and uh, sharing your testimony with me today, man. I really do appreciate it. Uh, it's my pleasure. Where you, you, uh, so you, so, so you out from US, USA? Uh, any you, you got somewhere set up now that you about to bounce to next, or, or you, or you playing the weight game? Uh, yes, uh, right now, yes, I, uh, I had, uh, got hired on this company, which I start on the 30th, uh, which is next Monday, I believe, yeah, Monday, I start, I already got my badge and everything. <laughs> All right, cool, cool, much success to you on, uh, on your next go-around, bro. Thank you for, uh, stopping yeah. by, and I really do appreciate it.
guys. And, you guys. And thank you for reaching out to me. Oh, Thanks yeah. a lot. Cause I feel I feel alive now. Because <laughs> uh, uh, I up. need somebody to know these things. Because for people who future want to get in the USA trucking, they need to know what's really going on. Oh, oh you very welcome, guys. You know the best conversation starts over here at the Lockout Men Podcast Show. If you want to get at me no. and share your testimony, all you got to do is hit that line two one six six zero zero two. I mean two wait, six zero zero two zero nine zero. You get that line. And you will be amazed in. once you do it. <laughs> That's what's up. Until next time, everybody, y'all take it easy. I appreciate you stopping by and listening. Until next, uh, again, until next time, we'll get back together. Peace. I'm like Beethoven with the bass on it. Me, classic kids, will went pop. Death to the hater won't stop. Let's talk key scales, it won't drop. You don't even need a scale to know I'm on top. Me and Mozart, could bars, you got bops. Urge Red and Tiffany, a whole symphony. You a symptom, me, but go off. I'll remake a masterpiece for you, or at least it's gonna hit like rump, bump, bump. Y'all fit to me like the symphony. Your career's done, done, done.